everybody out there this is Utsu Singh from smart tech and today welcome back to the part 2 of the simple meditation series so this is just some project I opened up nothing of important you need to import or you don't need to import anything um, it's just the maps we have done and the model we have exported right so first I'm gonna show you guys um, just import this right importing and texture normals was okay import all this shall be my fix and done no smoothing probes ignore that and just now as you can see our alpha AO normals what you want to do right click material open it up and you know what I'm just gonna hide this landscape for a moment to get better performance select these three and drag them in and as you can see I've got my normals which will of course just well basically plug that in the normal you don't need to do anything right now with it I'm going to give you guys the basic of it not to advance so just click outside the graph in the blend mode go to um, masked all right so you have opacity mask here and then shading model should be two sided foliage this should give us our opacity option as well all right now what and you have the subsurface color as well and this plug two sided just for the sake of it right now surface mask translucent just use mask what what this will do is it will just basically it will give us control over um as you can see in here the op opacity mask is nothing so basically it's pure white so what it is saying is that render the whole object no matter what because we don't have because we haven't used a map as of yet with it so what you like want to do is you would want to use this alpha that you have in the opacity mask right just put that up there and this my this is my ambient inclusion this is basically um, used like normal is for for fake details AO is basically using shadows to give more depth depth to your objects so now the moment I applied my opacity mask actually uh, now I'm just going to show it to you guys the effect it has now in here everything is being rendered of the model the moment I apply the opacity mask wait for it mm. now as you can see since I have applied the opacity mask, the places which are white are being rendered and the other places which are black are not being rendered at all. But they are still being processed by the CPU and the Unreal and the engine itself, um, which is one major problem and I will discuss it later on. Alright, so now you have this input opacity as well. I'm just going to use this mask so that white areas that are being displayed have full opacity all right now my subsurface color what I would like to do is I'd like to create a three vector convert to parameter um, base actually just name it color a then go ahead control W and basically color B and then I'm gonna give it a group of base color if you want to know what uh, if you want the explanation of this group just check out one of my material grouping videos it's pretty simple actually what you want to do now is basically loop that just hold L to create a loop A and B I'm gonna get some colors in here um, basically put that up there get that color copy right click and paste 
and let me get a darker shade here all right now what you want to do is plug this into a basic uh, first now what i want to do is have the color b at the bottom and the color a progresses upwards all right now one more thing just i want to view it on the plane yep right here let it happen come on oh, now i want to wait like this so what i want in here is to color um, from this color should be at the bottom and this color should go upwards so what you want to do is go ahead linear gradient and v gradient that is on the y in this case upwards direction u gradient is in the horizontal direction so if i just um, start reviewing nodes actually let me multiply this since it's multiplied by one no change in the result now i actually want to invert this right so what you want to do is use a one minus right start reviewing node now as you can see i am gonna give it a power that is it is basically um raised to power actually mathematically speaking um blend um blend power all right stop reviewing node let me connect correct this name right there give it a value of two put this into the exponent and start reviewing node again now as you can see as i increase this this should be moving upwards now here you see now what i like to do first is just clamp it to keep it between a value of 0 and 1 so that a blend doesn't go mad all right now i want to get an option for inversing this so inverse the color if i want to inverse the colors in one click not adjusting the colors themselves let's say in here start reviewing node my colors are being blended like the and this oh wait actually this one is the inverse one what i want is start reviewing node ah damn it multiply simple start reviewing start reviewing node now as you can see the black portions that is this will be the color a color and the white portion that is the color b this will be controlled by the power let's just say i want to invert it so what should i do i should in the from the base drag out a static switch parameter all right now name it invert gradient all right if it's true i want to invert this gradient but if it's false i want to use the normal gradient so let me just set the script to base color clamp it and here we go now i want to add in functionality for the user to use a simple base color as well so what i want to do is again a static switch um, name it use base color wait just let me name it use diffuse all right now false if it is set to false in here then it will be false it will use the in this color combination and if it's set to and if it is set to true it will use uh um this whole tier left click right convert to parameter texture actually base color simple which i don't want to use right now but i want to add it as an extra functionality right so now this is my base color 
I have a subsurface color. So subsurface scattering is basically when light passes through an object, for instance, let's say it is passing through your finger, um, you will see a reddish uh, shade appearing. That is the color of your blood, actually. So subsurface scattering is basically the color um, that is shown when light passes through an object. Uh, that is shown to the other side. Alright, so basically, let's say, actually, I'll just give you guys an practical. So, what you want to do is use this base color, but I want to add something more functionality. So, blend overlay, not overlay, overlay. Alright, my blend will be this, and my base will be three vector convert to parameter and name it subsurface scattering color all right and put this in here again this should go into your base color let me first copy this and then paste it right in here this is my subsurface color all right and this right here will be my base color so i'm just blending this color over the existing colors for uh, to get uh, so that when the light passes through the front of the object the color at the back of the object um, will be a custom color I can set that will blended be that will be blended be that will be blended on top of the front color all right seems a little confusing right but way really, it isn't that confusing so well here you go what you want is basically some strange color that I will change in now there's one more thing grass has rained but first let me just convert to texture object sorry not convert to texture object convert to parameters and name it um, alpha right in here convert to parameter name it normals Convert to parameter, name it ambient occlusion. Wait, I'd like to change the name AO. All right, so now what basically what you want to do basically is add wind. For this, I'm going to use world position offset so that it will basically move that plane, uh, move that plane randomly like wind does. So, what you want to do is world position offset. And drag out a wind node simple grass wind wind whatever you want to use what I usually use is called simple grass wind and actually just delete this additional world position offset I have none so I'm just gonna since it is vector 3 I'm gonna hold 3 left click and put this in here so no additional offsets so get two scale parameters wind intensity and duplicate it wind weight and I duplicate using control W so I can easily duplicate in an instant not using control C control V here wind weight wind intensity now wait something like one wind intensity and something like five and just let me get this right into wind all right so what you have here is now this will move the whole object itself i'm not using anything like a pivot point or something so it will basically move yep like this so what you want to do and this is going crazy like this because of my speed that is my intensity actually what you want to do is control w this select y and again put this uh, wind speed because it is a factor as well and if you have it why not use it right just put this in here right so um this is moving the whole plane i want to use the same method as in uh, the base color just I will I want to move have the wind effect only the top part so 
I'll ca copy the sling ingredient, blend power, and duplicate it. So I want to use this as a mask, right? So what you do is right here, blend power, um, wind mask power. I don't want an inverse because, well, actually I want to inverse this in this case. See, as when I inverse this, the black will be at the bottom. And make sure to use the V gradient. The black is at the bottom, that means what um, the black parts I want to be occluded, uh, not occluded. I want the wind does, should not affect the black parts, right? And the white parts will be affected by the wind. So, what you want to do is basically drag off from the world position offset. Um, just multiply and put this right in here and I'm gonna use the mass power to something like 5 right and stop ribbing node I want to see the effect of the wind of the multiplier so what it is doing here is masking out um, the effect of this setup um, through this Now, as you can see, only the top parts are being affected by wind. And if I want to change this, I can go right 2.5. Simple. And you can actually preview this node in here. Live update. I don't know. Now, as you can see, it has ha been. Um, more kind of effect because I've decreased the mass power all right so I've got my subsurface color and all that so what do we do now we don't need anything in the roughness specular what you could do is basically use a specular value because for grass specularity is there specularity is mostly reflectiveness of the material now let me just save this asset and that normals are pretty good so we are getting that perfect line in between that we created all right so now what you want to do is take this grass and browse and left click in here okay damn let me just create a material instance all right now let me go ahead select this put this i want to go ahead and change some stuff so that will first thing wind intensity way down and then my wind mass power should go up to five all right a lot of stuff changed now only this part is being moved it would be better if you um it will be less optimized of course if you use individual grass strand polygons not a simple plane but that will cause it to um basically reduce the um, um let's just say it will basically um in decrease the performance now what you want to do is in here as i've seen as you can see, I've got the grass, right? So what you want to do, maybe try a landscape. No, but first what I like to do is go to my grass, blend the project, open it up. Um, here we go. Now I've got this plane. What I like to do is shift D to duplicate and grab on the X all right so now just go ahead and go to wireframe mode so it is visible all right you can go through here wireframe shift D right rotate I'm going to get it into a hexagon uh, type shape as it helps in tiling etc and basically helps in increasing the density quick which is also a problem 
but it is helpful in some cases let me grab this in here I'll just grab this rotate I'm just basically rotating grabbing and putting stuff um, maybe shifty rotate grab shifty rotate and then basically something like um, shifty and then go ahead rotate it on the X to get a kind of a tail shifty rotates and something like that grab shifty rotate on the X um, in this case rotate on the Y all right grab in here and go into front view level it out grab set basically do this and just see make sure you are in the object mode select it press ctrl j to create one mesh file and first save it all right file export fbx selected objects grass um joined all right export fbx now I'll import that FBX I just created. Um, I have it in here. I'll put this in here. Import all. Um, how are we doing on time? 21 minutes. That's bad. But let's see. Now grass joint. Now, way better actually way better as you can see i've got some things going on here thus and and as you can see guys i've got a dense looking patch in here so what i want to do is first i'm just gonna go ahead create a new landscape not a very big one i'm just gonna settle for something small this time around first I like to increase my speed I like this thing in the 4 in 4.19 actually 4.20 came out sorry for that now I won't be using any material right now create all right now I'll just sculpt some sh sculpt some shapes in here not that strong actually just to get some basic feel in there all right we have something to work with now basically i'm gonna erode it a little two um, strand threshold surface thickness i should decrease the surface thickness and just basically get some sharp areas around here now what you want to do is use your grass right but currently you won't be able to use it using your foliage paint tool because if i try to drag it in here i can do but i need some randomization as well i like that because if i paint it right now it will like dull similar stuff which you just don't want in a landscape because that will look bad let me tell you compiling shaders this is some bug or something i don't understand now tell them what you want to do is right click and go into materials and textures actually miscellaneous foliage type um grass joint foliage type so i'm gonna write ft and in the static mesh i'm gonna go put this in here now this gives us some randomization option 
to get different um, to get easily get some variation in your grass using just one mesh but what is more um, let's say advisable is to create two three types of grass and start painting now as you can see in here it looks so damn bad because of no height variation at all now what you want to do is basically go in there um, see offset minimum just um, this is just some offset just play it uh, play with it to this will actually vary your height so I'm going to go in 0.5 and 1.5 basically align to normal um, this will tell it to align to the direction to the landscape is pointing out so align max angle don't need to do that random your random pitch angle ground slope just don't play with that one instant settings curl distance is big in here it won't be needed curl distance is when to fade out your foliage basically now as you can see i am getting some variation some slight variations not very much so basically i'm gonna increase that in there as you can see the moment i did that i'm getting some real large and hovering above my landscape because it is not quite properly aligned you might want to bring it down a bit down basically something like grab on the z but i don't want to do this because i'll have to take all these normals again all these maps again so what you should or actually what you can do grab on the z way down let me first check something if i remove these ones and go back actually this is too high value so maybe what you want is something and to make it less distracting i'm gonna wind mask all right wind intensity not good 0.5 should do in this case all right now Hmm. now as you can see I'm not getting a lot of variation and that's bad so what you want to do is basically go ahead do something like 2 maybe when I paint it I should be getting some more variation and maybe the density increase a bit actually just increase the density again I don't want it I didn't want oh actually here's the problem uh -huh. now it's working strange now let me bring it down to something like four or five or something I am getting a little bit of variation so what I can do is again increase this and basically go ahead paint this so what you could do is maybe say to do and then i'm just gonna go delete this one i don't want these yes delete those instances that i created and what you want might want to do is go ahead create um, just duplicate this open this up um, increase the z value to something like 1.5 all right apply changes oh not 0 0.5 1.5 apply changes yep that's pretty good so now what i want to do is again just get it right in here grass joint one right and keep this at around one and 1.5 this should help you randomize it and just let me delete and actually i just want to paint out these layers just hold shift to do that and left click 
make sure both are selected by make sure they are both are ticked and you should be getting some pretty nice variation now as you can see we have got another problem just keep it at something slightly bigger all right because yeah because larger grass will also occlude the smaller grass behind it so basically you will want maybe line um instant setting all right um collagen presets you don't want that actually this one might not have those um there is an option yep here you go just go down there put that up density i want to decrease the density of the larger grass so for instance we place at this density i want to decrease this all right earlier the density was this much no sorry i want to first delete the now what i like to do is wait I just want to remove those because I want to see the changes now I've decreased the density I have bigger grass now and I have smaller grass as well so as you can see now the key um, to get good grass you also need to have um, some good height variation maybe get an basically you can do something like this you can go ahead and increase your brush size way above i want to see the effect it has on hydration now as you can see i have got some pretty noticeable height variation which is pretty good because grass has a lot of height variation in um naturally so as you can see in here i can see some height variation now what you want to do basically is get down there if i play this right now As you can see, I've got some larger grass, I've got some smaller grass, you can go about, move in, and I've got some pretty dense in there. Now, only problem with the model is these strands are way too thick. You might want to small um, thin them, thin, make them thinner, alright? Now, since what you have to do is basically do something like this and as you can see i will have gotten 10 strands so what you want to do now is first cancel this and maybe i'll show in some future videos i'm still planning on them create i'm gonna create some rocks and stuff and then i'll just basically put these put that stuff in here make some freeze materials got a lot of stuff to do now, as you can see in here now there's one more problem I, s I was talking about that the part which was not being rendered is still computed by the um, let's say still computed by the engine and that is right so that is exactly why this is happening so this is called alpha overdraw if you want to search it up research um, there's a pretty simple way, uh, two ways, two only two ways to fix it basically. So what you want to do is now you will notice that the actual grass is green. That is the sh because of shader is um, pretty simple. Um, the thing is that the extra area, that is the planes, are when overlap the engine doesn't know what to do with them, so it gives out these errors and causes them to go this white tie so basically what you want to do is go ahead maybe decrease the density or so i'm gonna show you guys how, how to do that just if i decrease this density you will notice a change 
not much because when it is in the same line of sight it is gonna do that so what you can do is make your planes that is these planes smaller or basically you can go ahead and press K cut out And you can go ahead and select this delete faces done this won't reduce it a lot but that's one way and another way is of course have way less density of grass and intermix it with other objects like um, rocks etc to get better results and optimize and set up proper LODs I'm still learning that stuff because it's gonna take some time Alright, so I still have one more thing to show you and that is related to our material itself. I was talking about the subsurface. Now, let's see what happens if I change my subsurface color. And bring it way up. As you can see, the places um, where the sun is hitting, you can see this color. Otherwise, you won't. Because this, uh, the back side of the sun, the back side of the object being hit by the sun directly, um, gets the subsurface color. It is um, something right around there should do it and give me pretty good results. All right. So what you want in here is something. Depends on the kind of grass because there are lot, lots, lots of grasses. You can change the overall color. This is the color A, and then I have my color B for the base, which can be visible in here. Right. So give it something more natural. And one trick to blend the grass better with your ground. Um, use the base color uh, of the landscape as the base color of the grass and since in this case I'm using this it doesn't really matter try to match the colors see now that's about it hope you enjoyed this series and make sure to like share and subscribe if you like this video and want to stay updated for um, future ones hope you had a good time see ya